I'm Susan Kahn, a professor of medicine at McGill University in Montreal, Canada, and I had the privilege to be the chair of a new AHA scientific statement that has just been published. Uh, the statement is titled The Post-Thrombotic Syndrome, Evidence-Based Prevention, Diagnosis, and Treatment Strategies, and I, along with my international co-authors, uh, worked very hard over the last couple of years getting the statement together, and it has been finally published. This statement is really unique because it represents the first time that there have been evidence-based guidelines published that have been specific specifically focused on the post-thrombotic syndrome. The post-thrombotic syndrome has been a fairly unrecognized, frequent, and often serious complication of deep vein thrombosis. And deep vein thrombosis, which refers to blood clots which occur in the deep veins of the legs or in the lung circulation, uh, is actually the second most common vascular disease after acute coronary syndrome. And the post-thrombotic syndrome is the most frequent complication of deep vein thrombosis. Uh, it occurs in about 20 to 40 percent of patients after an episode of deep vein thrombosis and can lead to a lot of patient suffering in the form of chronically painful uh, and um, uh, swollen legs. Uh, in severe cases, leg ulcers can develop and it has been clearly shown that this condition, the post-thrombotic syndrome, affects a patient's quality of life, it affects their ability to work, and is extremely costly to our healthcare system. The purpose of this AHA statement was to give an up-to-date review of the post-thrombotic syndrome, but also to provide very practical recommendations on how to optimally prevent it, diagnose it, and treat it. The intended audience for the statement really is uh, any physician, nurse, or other healthcare professional who's involved in caring for patients with deep vein thrombosis. Because as I mentioned earlier, the post-thrombotic syndrome is a very frequent complication of deep vein thrombosis. What we did in our statement was, uh, first of all, we reviewed the epidemiology of the post-thrombotic syndrome, which really has to do with how often it occurs and in what types of patients. And we also uh, discussed the societal burden of post-thrombotic syndrome, both in terms of cost to the patient themselves, uh, to the healthcare system, and to society at large. Uh, we then went on to uh, discuss how does post-thrombotic syndrome uh, show itself clinically, uh, what are the characteristic symptoms and features on physical exam uh, associated with the post-thrombotic syndrome, and we then uh, discuss uh, how best to diagnose this condition. Uh, we then go on to review risk factors for the post-thrombotic syndrome, and uh, in the latter part of the chapter, we provide uh, recommendations on best practices in the current day, namely 2014, uh, for means to prevent the post-thrombotic syndrome and to treat the post-thrombotic syndrome after it occurs. Finally, we discussed uh, post-thrombotic syndrome in special populations namely in patients who have had an upper extremity deep vein thrombosis, or an arm DVT, and then uh, in children who have had deep vein thrombosis, because both these types of patient groups are at risk as well of developing the post-thrombotic syndrome. And uh, a final important aspect of our statement is that we do uh, spend some time discussing areas for future research, because unfortunately uh, for the post-thrombotic syndrome, although it is, as I mentioned, a very frequent complication of deep vein thrombosis, there's still much to be learned in terms of its underlying pathophysiology or why it occurs after deep vein thrombosis, uh, as well as uh, we need to discover better ways to prevent it and treat it, treat it because current modalities are not uh, entirely effective. I would like to congratulate the American Heart Association for recognizing that the post-thrombotic syndrome is really deserving of its own scientific statement. Uh, this is the first time that there have been evidence-based guidelines authored by a group of international experts in the field that have solely focused on the post-thrombotic syndrome. And while the post-thrombotic syndrome has been a component of other types of evidence-based guidelines focusing on deep vein thrombosis and venous thromboembolism as a whole, uh, there has always been limited room in those chapters to really address the particular issues of the post-thrombotic syndrome. And I feel very strongly that our statement uh, very uh, clearly aligns with the AHA's mission of building healthier lives free of cardiovascular disease and stroke. The post-thrombotic syndrome is an important form of cardiovascular disease, and therefore uh, our statement uh, fits clearly within the AHA's mission.